It was an accident that was entirely preventable. A lone driver on a long stretch of road in the free state slammed into a pile of sand, blocking access to a damaged regional road. Driving in darkness and with not a warning sign in sight, the driver just didn't stand a chance. It's just one of those many examples of how years of underspending, neglect and ineptitude have turned some of the free state's roads into death traps. And while provincial politicians make promises almost as big as the potholes themselves, some locals are just getting stuck into fixing the issues. Here's McFarlane. For a while now, we had received reports about the hazards of free state roads. So we took a journey that began on the R34 close to the Blumhof Dam in the west of the province. Then another to meet farmers on the R30 that carries traffic through the province's centre. And a hair-raising drive close to the provincial border in the east where the R34 continues into northern KwaZulu-Natal. Each road, we discovered how ineptitude and indifference by the provincial roads department had led to injuries or death. On the last day of May, an icy wind blows across the R34 as journalists await the Premier's arrival. She was coming to inspect the state of this road that had embarrassed her officials when a truck driver filmed his journey. And this video went viral. This is how people have to drive on these roads, every which way, in the middle, next to the road. You can't even drive next to the road anymore. How ridiculous is this? The truck driver lambasted the Free State ANC for destroying the roads, mocking the politicians' blue light brigades. He has a point. The Free State Premier doesn't travel light. And her inspection of the road with MEC William Bolwane was confined only to the first potholes of the 12-kilometer stretch in the trucker's video, conveniently leaving out the far more embarrassing section. I understand and I'm not happy because these small and potholes, by tomorrow, the department should start working on them. But these are not small and potholes. This is complete disintegration of an important economic link. Free State Agriculture's Dr. Jack Armour took us for a bumpy tour. The R34 is quite a major road that traverses the whole of the northern free state, linking a lot of important agricultural towns. But the R34 actually goes all the way up to Richards Bay. And um, I'm quite sure that this is a, a manganese truck riding past right now. It's fair to say the road network in the free state is at a tipping point. The question is, can the Premier and her team bring it back from the brink? Seven months ago, MEC William Bulwani moved from agriculture to police, roads and transport. If the road network gets worse, he's the politician to blame. Most of our roads in the first state, their last span has lapsed, so they've aged and they need to be redone. But he has neither the 20 billion rand nor the skills his department require. Right now, there aren't even enough greater operators. His former MEC outsourced maintenance to inexperienced contractors, costing 736 million rand over three years with little to show for it. We don't do these shady works. We don't want do the thing that will come back to us again after we have left government. So I want my legacy to be on these roads. George Michalakis represents the Free State in the National Council of Provinces on behalf of the DA. He has been probing where and how roads money is spent. Now, the irony is that the provincial department sits with road authorities that is tasked actually with building the roads. They are underfunded or they have a top heavy funding where uh, office personnel in Bloemfontein and Valcom re receive massive salaries, but they don't employ people on the ground who can actually do the, the work. So you've got a department uh, actually just taking salaries uh, you're not funding them to do their work and you're contracting all of this work out uh, to contractors who don't have a clue how to build the roads in the first place. And that's the crux of the problem. So this is the R30 and it's an important link for farmers and miners, but it's become a point of tension here in the heart of the Free State. February brought heavy rains and flooding over a section of the road. 
more than 25 people have died. Some drowned when a bus, taxi and cars aquaplaned into the water. There were 50 accidents, so MEC Bolwane just closed the road. But that had a devastating effect on the local farmers because they couldn't get their grain to the silos. Rudy Janssen van Vieren is a local farmer. Why is the anger directed towards the Free State Roads Department, Dukom? Ons voel van die begin af het hulle nie genoeg gedoen om die probleem aan te spreek nie. Die pad is eenvoudig net toegemaak, toe ons klara oor, toe sy weer oopgemaak. Ek dink in die totaal was daar 8 of tot 10 keer wat die pad oop en toe, oop en toe was. En ons probleem is nou word die alternatieve route gerei. The alternative route is this 18 kilometer back road which the farmers maintain at their own expense. Suddenly, it was carrying mining trucks moving at high speed and slow moving farm vehicles. That caused further accidents. In May, fed up farmers blocked the road for an hour to make their point to government. Ons het die doodloopstraat bereik met die paie raad. Ons het voorstelle gegee, ons was gefrustreerd, maar ons het gevoel die ouwens hoor ons nie. The road level of the flooded R30 was then raised by a private company at their own expense with permission from the province and it was reopened. But Dr. Jack Armour, who liaises with more than 3,000 farmers in the province, says what came next was just as dangerous. Bulwani's department erected sand barriers to try and stop drivers accessing the road, but with insufficient signage that couldn't be seen at night, it was an accident waiting to happen. One can understand the concern of government that this road is really dangerous. From our perspective, the government hasn't done enough to alert the motorist of the danger of this, this perfectly safe road if, if, if travellers were just alerted to slow down, to be aware, to take it slow. But now Free State Roads wants to build a bridge here. The farmers clearly don't trust government. What is government going to do with the money? Why do they want to build such an expensive bridge? Are they looking for any excuse to, to build root. massive infrastructure? Yes, that they can then skim off the top from. When we arrived last week, fuming farmers and local townspeople <laughs> waited patiently for the Premier and MEC Bolwani. Three hours late, the Premier, a phalanx of MECs and a local mayor arrived. The travelling extravaganza had come to Allen Ridge and crossed the sand barrier that by now stopped no one, including the Premier's entourage. The farmers came straight to the point. To her credit, the Premier diffused the volatile gathering. We know that without you, the economy of the free state is nothing. That is why we have decided that we must meet with them. Vangelis Bible and Rick. The Premier reminded the farmers that every death is a claim against their department. And she set up a task team meeting with her officials and farmers. What we are saying, we can hear it. We don't want to lose economy, but we also don't want to lose people's lives. Our final stop was in the Eastern Free State on the R34, punctuated with potholes and sadness. It links the small towns of the Free State to Northern Natal. Last year, a teacher driving a school bus had just dropped off children and was returning to his school in Frieda, but he never arrived. The school bus hit a pothole, the tire had a blowout, and the bus veered headlong into a truck. Three people died that day. Henk Boerter is the principal of Freda High and Primary School. I couldn't believe it. It is unbeschrijfelijk. Men wil het niet weer beleven. Jouw brein wil niet zoiets verwerken. After the accident, he wrote a letter begging Free State authorities to please fix the roads. Did you ever get a response to that? Niks. Niks. Tot en vandaag niks. Hoe veel moet nog doen het gaan? Voordat we iets aan die paaie gaan doen. That same question has been asked by another principal, 60 kilometers southeast of Frieda, in the small town of Miermel. <laughs> Johan Dudoy is both a principal and a paramedic, 
and is first responder at horrific accidents on these free state roads. When you arrive at a scene, what's the first thing that goes through your mind? Anger. Anger. Just imagine yourself. Getting there, you see bodies lying there, and it's due to bottles. In, in any of these accidents, were they children? Because for me, sometimes that's the worst. Yes, definitely. Uh, um, breaking limbs, falling out of cars, uh, seeing them under the space blanket, you know, uh, the little feet, seven, eight years old. Here, there have been no blue light road shows. In fact, no shows from anyone who can fix a road. Tar is thin, patchy and dangerous. Look at the thickness of that. There were four accidents here in 12 days in December. Nothing was done. Then a few weeks ago, two trucks collided and fell into the flay spilling oil and coal. The other one couldn't break fast enough and it seems like the two trucks hooked and they both went down the, the bank into the, um, into the flat due to the same bottles which I have begged them to please go and fix five months before. With around 3,000 damaged tyres and a mounting death toll, locals in Miamal decided they had to end the carnage themselves. Driki Katsia is a Newcastle teacher that moved to Miamal. I came here and everybody was complaining and I thought to myself, well, let's just try and nudge it in some direction. It began with only five tons of tar scrounged from the roads department and snowballed from there. Now a Newcastle businessman has contributed equipment. Local labour is paid for by farmers and residents and together they are fixing these provincial roads without a cent coming from the Free State budget. So we got a phone call from a person from Frieda in the roads department saying that uh, we are not allowed, we need permission to work on the roads. Uh, I don't think at this stage I have to ask any authority to save lives. We will do what is necessary to save those lives. And if it is to fill a bottle, we'll do that. So is this what it's come to? Citizens scrounging tar to fix the Free State's roads at their own expense? And what of MEC Bolwani's legacy to complete these roads by 2024? We are going to do our level best. We may not finish them, but we have attempted to finish them. Just this week, another vehicle slammed into the sand barrier on the R30, and farmers, with a few provincial workers and their own, urgently constructed rumble strips, hoping to rescue their local economy, and most importantly, save lives. Thank you for watching our stories here online and please subscribe below to become part of our YouTube community and be notified when we upload our latest content.